We serve a good God, amen? And uh, I try to say this very carefully, but whoever, whatever title you need God to be, um, he, he plays an amazing role because some, uh, maybe you didn't have a father figure in your life and you, um, you, you, you long for that and you, you miss that in your life and he, he, he can be that, that father figure. Um, for some, you didn't have a, a mom around and I'm not, again, I'm not stretching this. I'm just saying for that, for that nurturing and that, that love and that, that encouragement that only a mother uh, can provide, God, God is able to meet your need whatever it is. Um, and so, I don't know, some of you may, may answer this question uh, differently than others, but how many would say that 2018 was a challenging year? Uh, because I can look around and I know your stories. We, we've had numerous conversations. And I can look around the room and I can even look in the mirror and say, man, it's been a challenging year in, in a lot of ways. Um, there's a lot of changes that have maybe happened in your life and I know they have in my life, and you look, maybe it's been challenging in, in, some, in some good ways, in some positive ways, uh, where you've learned something from it. I uh, received a text from a family in the church who was heading to Dallas this past week, uh, going for some tests and praying for good results, and you know what? They received those good results, amen? And, and we want to praise God for that. We want to thank Him for that. Well, on the other side of it, there's others that are, you know, you're praying for that same um, report, and that report didn't come back, and so you're, you're struggling and you're going through it. Whatever is going on in your life, God is completely there. He's walking with you. Um, let me just kind of throw out a couple of things here that, that's coming up because I want you to be aware. Um, we're going to have a 21-day fast starting uh, January 7th. Now, some of you are automatically, you're like, so fasting means no food, right? I'm out. Let, let me just kind of give you this disclaimer. You can fast as much or as little. It, it may be as little as, if you're like me, I don't drink my coffee black. It's more of a caramel, you know, taste and color. So it may just be instead of that whatever scoop amount you put of sugar in it, it could be, I'm going to take one out, you know. It, it may be as little as that. It may be instead of having dessert after every meal, I'm just going to have it after one meal or maybe two meals. I don't know how many meals you have per day, all right? It, it could be as little as that. It could be just going without, you know, soft drinks or sweets or whatever the case may be. Or if you want to really just dive in completely, there's a fast called the Daniel Fast. And if you want to, to learn more about that, we'll get some information out to you this next week. Carol will get that out. Uh, if you want to kind of dive into that, we'd love to give you some resources and, and kind of help you walk through that and know what to do and, and how to do that. So bottom line is it's not about how you do it. It's kind of like, you know, baptism for me. Does it matter if you're dunked or you're sprinkled or sprayed? No, it's, it's whether or not you did it, okay? It, and it's the heart behind the behavior and the action, okay? And so um, whatever that is, I just encourage you. It's not just about you being in a bad spot and just longing for God. Scripturally, um, we're, we're called to fast and pray over things and over a period of time. And let me just add, just for a health standpoint, it's healthy for our bodies sometimes to fast and, and detox in some ways. So, so there's my commercial for the 21-day fast, and we'll be talking more about that. And then the next series I'm going to be um, working through is called Selfless. And you're going to hear me talk about um, some goals today because we're wrapping up 2018 and we're looking forward to 2019. And so the next time I see you, Guys, it'll be next year, okay? So we're going to talk about that. But typically when we think about goals, we think about goals that we want to do. We want to, you know, be healthier. We want to, you know, save up money. We want to spend money better, all these sorts of things. And, and in, when you really look at it inherently, it, it's selfish, right? It's all about making me feel better, and there's nothing wrong with that in those regards. But what I want to stretch in this series is when we begin to set goals that God is leading and only God can do. We turn over things to him a little bit more, spend a little bit more time with him. And so we're going to talk about, you know, giving and serving and, and witnessing. And I'm not going to tell you which Sunday we're going to talk about giving so that you'll be here every week. All right. So but, but there, there, it is important to talk about how we spend our money and we spend our resources, because it's not about us building the little C church. Right. It's about becoming the big C church. 
And so if we're not doing our part, then we can't do what our part, okay? So, so let me just move on to the message today. I want to talk about one thing. We talk about goals, and we talk about, okay, it, it's just natural for us to look back and, okay, man, this past week, I don't know if any of you teachers, if you had kids at home, they're, they're probably doing a lot of nothing, right? And, and if you were off work, you probably did a lot of what? Nothing. You thought you were going to catch up on the chores, but now you have more chores, okay? So whatever the case may be, um, this is one of those days I wish they would make stretchy pants suits, pants, okay? I mean, I'm just really would love some, some stretch and some movement, okay? And so it's about, I want to do better, I want to feel better, all these sorts of things. But again, I, I want us to focus on one thing, maybe that, that God wants to do. And so what I want to do, I want to typically don't do this, but I want to um, I want to just have a, just a moment of prayer real quick because I want, I want us to really allow the Holy Spirit to focus on that one thing, not being overwhelmed by all the things we want to do or all the things people expect us to do, not the work goals, not the home goals, not the life goals, but I'm talking about the God goals that He wants to place in us, okay? We just have just a quick time of prayer. God, I, I just want you to just lead us. I want you to speak through me today. I want you to be heard. God, help us not to have all the distractions. We know there's just a lot of distractions, a lot of things going on on the outside and around us, but we want to we wanna hone in on you, what your will is for us. So God, help us to focus on that one thing that you want to change either in us, about us, or around us. God, show us very clearly and help us to leave here following you faithfully and obediently. In Jesus' name we pray and we all sit. Amen. Thank you. So Isaiah 43, 18 says it this way. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. There's nothing wrong with thinking about the past. It's just don't live there. So don't dwell on the past. I love this. See, I am doing a new thing. And I love the imagery he paints here. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And here's, here's my take on this, is where we sometimes only see darkness and where we can't see a glimmer of hope, God does His best work. When we feel like God can do nothing, when we feel like there's no hope, when we feel like we're so overwhelmed, we feel like, man, I'm just stuck here, I'm never going to get any further, I'm never going to have peace, I'm never going to have joy, I'm never going to find happiness. Here's what, God loves it when we call out to Him in those dark, deep places, because when he pulls us out of that and he sees us through that, you know who gets the glory? Him. He loves to pull us through. He loves to drag us through sometimes. He loves to lead us through times when we were like, man, there's no way I was able to get out of that by myself. And it causes us to not focus on ourselves. It causes us to focus on him. It's not that he enjoys when we go through hardships, but he does enjoy seeing us through those hardships. And feel a little bit closer to him. So how can we see what he's doing? If he's up to all this, if he's bringing springs and streams and, and all of this out of the wilderness where it seems like it's dry and desolate, if that's what he's trying to do in every area of our life, then how do we see it? Well, Matthew 6, Jesus says this, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So one simple answer. You want God to do something? want God to do something supernatural? You want God to do something that doesn't make sense to you or anyone else? How do you do that? You focus on Him. You focus on Him. You put all of your attention. You put all of your affection toward Him and His will. So let's kind of work through. How do, how do I know what that one thing is? What does that even look like? Let's, let's work through three questions today, and then you can kind of work through those answers for yourself. One thing questions. Number one, if you're taking notes. What one thing do you desire from God? What one thing do you desire from God? And this is kind of just kind of, again, narrowing our focus to make your life or my life better or more fulfilling. And it's not about the worldly possessions, right? We're through at Christmas. Maybe, you know, depends on the age of your children. They're already working on next year's Christmas list. You know, I don't know. Uh, hopefully they were fulfilled with what you gave them or what you didn't give them and all this sort of thing. But it's, so it's not about the worldly possessions. And there's nothing wrong. Again, another disclaimer, there's nothing wrong with wanting nice stuff. If your vehicle is falling apart and you're worried that you're not going to get home today, it's okay to ask for a better vehicle. Can we be okay with that? Okay. If your water heater is out, it's okay to pray and 
Ask for another water heater, right? It, it's, it's good. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. My daughter just turned 16 recently, and you know what I'm praying for? You know what I'm longing for? I want a shotgun, the ones that cock. <laughs> That's what I want. I don't want the one that just sits there. I want to be able to... <laughs> That's, I want that, okay? So if you're looking for something, okay, April 15th is my birthday. I'm just kidding. So all that sort of thing, if you have extra money from your taxes or whatever, I'm a tax baby. So all that said, we, there's nothing wrong with wanting things. There's nothing wrong with desiring. There's nothing wrong with walking through academy and going, I really like that, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But, but what we're talking about here is, what do I desire that God desires for me? Not that selfish, not that something that's only going to benefit me. Psalm 27, 4 says it like this. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. I, I say this often, and, and, and serving with, with a hospice organization gives me perspective, and so I like to bring that to you guys from time to time. And, but I remind you that never ever have I sat with a patient at the end, and they say, can you hand me my phone? I just want to scroll through Facebook one more time. Can, can you get out, you know, my checkbooks? I can see how much I, I have. Can you take me to my truck or my car? Let me just sit in that one more time. It's always, always, always about I want the people I love around me. And the family wants to know where they're going. Where they're going. So, so, so let's fast forward, guys. Let's fast forward. When, when it's all said and done, and, and when life is here, and it, it's, it's ending, the perspective is not this. Not that this doesn't matter. It's that, am I investing more in what's to come or what will never be? Am I investing in those that love me and I'm responsible for? Am I investing in kingdom stuff? Remember, seek first what? My kingdom and my wants? No, his kingdom. And all this stuff, all this peace, all this joy will be added to you. So, so what is that? What is that one thing maybe for you? Maybe it's for... For you to be instrumental in leading somebody to Jesus Christ, to know Him personally. Maybe it truly is about, you know, a burden you have as your finances. It's just about overwhelming to you. And how do you get those in order? It really is about trying to find happiness and peace in a relationship that, that may be abusive, it may be hurtful, it may be harmful for you. So you're just trying to find peace and joy and rest in that, whatever that looks like. Maybe there's a young couple in the, in the service today and you're just praying for a child. You're praying for, for your family to grow. Whatever that is, you're praying for peace in the midst of heartache this past year. I don't know what you're longing for God to do, but maybe, just maybe, God's going to focus you in on what that one thing is. What if it's not just something that it's tangible, right, that you can see and experience, you know, just outwardly? What if what God wants to do and that one thing that He desires for you is, a, is more of a spiritual thing? Galatians offers us this, Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. And then he lays it out for us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So what does that mean for us? What that means for us is the law can't manage this. No one can manage this. You can't produce love. You can't do anything to produce. Well, we can project patience, right? We can project love. We can project peace. We can project joy. We can say all day long, I'm happy. We can say all day long, I'm joyful. We can say all day long, I love everybody. But when it comes down to the real hardships in life, when we're experiencing the hard time, when someone cuts us off or someone flips us off or someone makes us mad, someone cuts us down, someone spreads a rumor, then it's about, well, is love being produced in you then? When things aren't going your way, things aren't turning out the way you thought they should, are you being patient then? 
And so all of that, it's easy to say it when life is good. And so what, what he's saying in this is, if you desire to be closer to God, if you desire to be more like God than we all should, then it's all about proximity to the Holy Spirit. It's the only way to, for Him to produce that in you, is to spend time with Him. And then all of a sudden, you're going to change from the inside out, becoming more and more like Him. There was a guy who approached Jesus with a question. He had everything but eternal life, and so he basically asked Him, how can I get what you have? You've been talking about it. And so Jesus listed out all these commandments, all these things he should be doing, and this checklist, and the guy just kind of proudly, if you kind of read the scripture for yourself, kind of just proudly says, yeah, done that, done that, yep, yep, that's me, check, check, check. Then all of a sudden he gets to this in Mark chapter 10, verses 21 and 22. He said, Jesus looked at him, and I like this part, Jesus looked at him, and he loved him. So just pause there for a second. In the midst of all his bragging and his pridefulness, Jesus knew what was about to happen, yet he loved him anyway. So if you ever ask, does, does God love me even when I disappoint him? Of course he does. Does, does God love me even when I'm unfaithful? He loves you in the midst of your pride, in the midst of your stubbornness. He loves you, and so, but yet he's going to speak truth. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. So he said, give up all you have here so you can have all you ever dreamed of there. Then come and follow me. And at this, the man was excited and willfully gave up everything he had. Is that what it said? I'm just seeing who's awake, all right? Who's alert? Who's engaged, right? No, his face fell. Why? Why was he sad? He went away sad because he had very little wealth. He had great wealth. What if, what if, in order to gain what God wants to give you, he's going to ask something from you? See, this guy, as far as the world turned, I mean, he had everything. He had the car, he had the, you know, he had the golf clubs, he had that shotgun, he had all the stuff you could ever dream. He had it all. He had retirement, and it was actually growing, right? He had everything was good for him. Everything was great. But he saw this one thing. But then he realized the price, and he wasn't willing to give up what he had for what he wanted. Why? Because what he had is what he really wanted more than that. And what I would ask you really quickly is to ask, just ask God to evaluate, is there something you're holding on to? You're holding on to it, but God wants you to, <laughs> so that you can get something better. That, that's the second question for our one thing. The second question is this, if you're taking notes, what one thing do you need to let go? In order to gain something from God that He desires for you, what if there's something you need to let go of? Philippians 3, 13, 14 says this, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. We don't really know what exactly, this is Paul writing, and he's in a prison, and he's writing all these encouraging things, and he's, he's got perspective, and he's writing all this, and he's saying, forget this, forget all that stuff. He's, what is he forgetting? And then as you kind of look through Scripture, you know, maybe don't know exactly what he's trying to let go of, but possibly it may have been a number of things. You see, he was beaten badly on five occasions. And when I say badly, I say when they walked away from him, they said, he's gone. Uh, they, they left him for dead. He oversaw the stoning of Stephen. Can you just imagine, just, just think about that for just a second. You're, you're over a quarry, and you're looking down on this man who had done nothing but good things. But before he was Paul, he was Saul, and he was a bad man before God transformed his life. And so he was there, and he was watching Stephen's clothes. I don't know what they were going to do with Stephen's clothes after the K. I don't know, but he was watching Stephen's clothes. And so you have this guy in the center, and he's being stoned to death, and then you're on your way to kill more just like that. So just think about it. All the bad stuff you've done, I would venture to say you've never done anything that bad. So imagine the guilt and the shame. and You imagine that replaying over his mind sometimes? 
And he said, I, I I'm going to forget about who I was. He was beaten with a rod three times. You thought a switch was bad. I mean, my grandmother could pick the switch that would wrap around your legs three or four times and then still pop at the end. Three times with 40 lashes each time. Maybe, he, maybe he's battling holding a grudge. Maybe he's, you know, all this sort of thing. He had some bad stuff happen to him. And so maybe that's some of the stuff he's letting go. So maybe for us, it, it may be letting go of some pain that someone caused you in your past. It's about, I've got to let that go. I've got to forgive them. I'll never forget it, but I've got to forgive them. I've got to move on. What is that from the past that I may just need to let go of? Because today's a new day. And God is doing, remember, a new thing. But He can't do it while you're still dwelling on that. What if what we're holding on to is keeping us from receiving God, what God has in store for us? What if what He has is better than what you're grasping so tightly? It's time to let it go. It's time to say, God, what is it? It could be letting go of how you spend your time so you can spend your time with family, friends. Remember, we, we can fast forward our lives. We don't know when our last breath is going to be here. We don't, I'm not trying to be morbid here. I'm just saying perspective purposes, we don't know. So, so in the end, if that's what matters, and it really does, then am I spending at least the time I have? We understand we have to work. We understand we have responsibilities in this world and in this life. We understand that. We're limited in our time. But how we spend our time, how we spend our resources, how we spend our energy, are we spending those on eternal things? Are we spending those things that are intangible and we're never going to get back? Are we spending those opportunities we have with the people who matter most to us and also the people who matter most to Him? How we spend our time, how we spend our resources, how we spending that. Maybe it's about certain friends that you need to let go of. It's about they're negative, they are critical, they are always finding the negative and the wrong with everybody and around, and the more time you spend with them, what happens to you? They don't become like you. You know what happens? You become like them. And so it's a matter of maybe God is showing you need, to, you need to let go in order for you to be a better friend, a better person, to be more joyful, to be more at peace, and to find the, the positives in life. Maybe it's time for you to let go of them. If you're scrolling through Facebook and you just see that same person and it's always negative or it's always braggy, and you know what their life is behind the scenes. You know how messy it is, but they just keep projecting that life is phenomenal. If all you keep thinking about every time you scroll is it's just you're mad and you're bitter, you know what you can do? And some of you, you're not on Facebook. Let me just get through this just a second. For those who are on Facebook, this is a big deal. So all you need to do is click, and you need to unfollow that. You need to just, just get it out of your life. Here's the deal. My, my father-in-law was just telling me well, last night we were talking before football games and stuff came on, and we were, our blood pressure was better before that. And so we were just talking. He said, I haven't watched the news in three days. And the next line was, and I feel better than I felt in weeks, right? I'm adding that on. But here's the deal. If you're bitter, if all you're ever seeing is the negative, and all you, and I just can't believe the world's going this way, you know what you have the power to do? This is perfect timing. <laughs> Shut it off. That's what you have the power to do. You can't time it any better than that. You wonder if the Holy Spirit's part of this. He is fully engaged. I love, thanks for playing along. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm not making eye contact. I don't know where it came from, but I love you for it. That was perfect. So let's move on. Number three. Number three. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was, that was good stuff. Oh, man. What one promise do you need to claim? So, let me, let me work through this. What one thing do you need desire from God? What not, not that you desire from God, but that maybe God desires from you. So turn that around a little bit. And then what one thing do you need to let go of? So God wants to give you something. He wants to give you peace. And you've got to let go of that hurt. He wants to give you love. He wants to help you to be more loving to the people around you. Then, 
you know what? You need to quit finding all the faults in them. You need, you need to let go of expecting everybody to be perfect and everything to be just complete. You know what the thing I did? You, you, if those who've been around here, you know how much I hate glitter, right? I, I, think, I think part of the penalty of hell is going to be glitter everywhere. I just, I just truly believe that. Um, but one thing I understand is, you know what? If, if my hatred of glitter is in contrast to my wife's love of glitter, then every once in a while I need to give in. Can we just, you know, so the Christmas tree we got this year, you know what it has all over it? Straight from hell. <laughs> Glitter. And the dog loves to walk through it, shake her tail, shake the glitter. So what I do is I just don't look. The blinds over there on that side of the room don't get opened by me. I don't want that glitter on my feet. I don't want that glitter on the bottom of my socks, right? And so all that, all that to say is, you know, it, it's, it's okay. And so sometimes it, it's just... It's just that's what it is if we if we truly care about the happiness and the enjoyment of people around us that we care about then every once in a while we need to put our desires aside because you know what i love i love more than my hatred of glitter you know what this is a sappy husband moment just get over it i i love I love my wife more than that. And so God has to constantly show us those little things. And it's amazing how little things sometimes just grab us. And they don't really matter. They don't really matter. So, what promise do you need to claim? David was anointed as king of Israel as a young boy long before he was ready. And the closer he got to the throne, the more outraged Saul, this is another Saul, the king grew toward David. He was jealous. He knew, and this is kind of Old Testament stuff, so the Holy Spirit and the presence of God and the anointing uh, was no longer on Saul. Now the Holy Spirit is spread out through us and living in every believer, but in the Old Testament it was a little bit differently, and uh, worked differently. And so Saul, the presence of God, was taken from him. So you imagine that, right? He's still in the position, but he's not anointed. David is not yet in the position, but he's anointed, and he's waiting. And so real quickly, it may be that God has yet to give you the title of whatever that is, but he's preparing you. Then, then trust him in the preparation. Trust him in that time period. He is just as real in you before you get in that position, before you have that title, than you are when you have that title. So, so just wait. Keep waiting for your time. Keep riding that bench until the coach calls your name. Just as sports reference, I think a lot of us can relate. There was a time when David was being pursued by Saul and, and really didn't have a way out. So he cried out to God, and this was his cry in Psalm 56. This one thing I know, God is for me. I am trusting God, oh, the praises, or oh, praise His promises. I am not afraid of anything mere man can do to me. Yes, praise His promises. I will surely do what I have promised, Lord, and I thank you for your help. For you have saved me from death and my feet from slipping so that I can walk before the Lord in the land of the living. So, what does that look like for us? What does it look like for us? There is an enemy that is pursuing us who are following Christ. And he is trying to do everything to distract us, to disrupt our focus, disrupt our passion, disrupt all the fruit that, that God is trying to pursue. You know that, that vine that's growing in us and the fruit is, is being produced in us and the enemy is trying to just pick it. The enemy is trying to rob it. The enemy is trying to rob our perspective. He's trying to rob our joy. He's trying to rob our patience. He's trying to disrupt all of that. And all the while, God is helping us say, just focus on me, focus on me. Don't worry about that. And what David is understanding is he's hiding out from his enemy. His focus is on the Lord. He's saying, even in the midst of me hiding out, even in the midst of me running, I'm running away from my enemy, but I'm running toward you. See, so often what we're doing sometimes is we're running away from our enemy, but we're not running toward God. We're just running aimlessly. We're just trying to escape. We're afraid. We're fearful. We're worried. We're overwhelmed. And that's what the enemy would have us do. If he can't catch us, at least he has us running crazy. 
At least he has us distracted. At least he has us overwhelmed. At least he has us burdened. At least he has us downcast. At least he has us beaten down and just alienated by ourselves out there. But one thing David understand, I want you to understand today, is that we run from enemies, but we run toward him. Are you pursuing him? Because I guarantee you he's pursuing you. So, the promises that we claim. And when I say claim, I'm not saying you, you name it and claim it. I'm not talking about it. I'm just saying there are promises in Scripture. And I want to just line these out for you just really quickly as I read through them. Maybe one or two speaks to you. Here's some promises throughout Scripture for you. Philippians 4.19 says, To meet every need you have from His riches. 1 Corinthians 10.13 You won't be tempted beyond what you can handle. So He's not going to put you in a place that He can't give you the strength to resist. Ephesians 1, 7 and 1 John 1, 9. I love this, to forgive all your sins. All the bad ones, all the ugly ones, all the ones you never, ever talk about. He wants to forgive those if you'll just confess it to Him. Romans 8, 28. To make everything work out for your good. Hebrews 13, 5. He had never leave you nor forsake you. In Psalm 46, 1. To be your ever-present help in trouble. He wants to be there and all there all the time. Isaiah 40, 29, to give strength to the weary and power to the weak. Psalm 32, 8, to guide you and give you direction. He doesn't want you to be lost. He wants you to know where you're going. He wants to give you guidance and direction to wherever he's leading you. Philippians 4, 7, to give you a peace that goes beyond your understanding. There's times you don't have to understand him. You just have to trust him. And eventually you'll begin to understand as you look back further and further away from that trial, from that hardship, or even that success, and you'll see what God was trying to do all along. James 4, 7, to give you power to defeat Satan, our enemy. Romans 8, 39, nothing would separate you from God's love. I love that promise. God is always in love with us. Romans 8, 37, you are more than conquerors. You don't have to live a defeated life. John 10, 27, 28, the final one. Eternal life through Christ. What is it? What is that one thing that God is stirring within you? He wants that for you. What is it? When you begin to see what that is, then what are you going to have to let go of? If it truly is being healthier, you know what I've got to let go of? That donut. <laughs> All those sweets my mother-in-law made and left us at our house. <laughs> that every time I open the fridge, eat me. I mean, it's just. What, are, what is it? Finances. I've got to get my finances in order. I, but I can't get off Amazon because I'm a Prime member. Right? <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, you, the only way it works is to take full advantage of it. All right? What, what is it in our life? Is there one person, and I, I'm wrapping up with it, is there one person in your life that needs Jesus? I, I wasn't, I, let me go off script real quick. I, I promise I'm, I'm hurrying. Um, so, not to get into too, too depth, uh, too deep here, but, you know, the, the man who, who raised me is, is not really in my life right now, and so it's just happened recently. And so Christmas Day was a, a tough, and I just, as your pastor, I didn't, I didn't want to call him. I just kind of own it today. <laughs> but I felt God leading me. And so what God kept help, helping me remember is that he's not in church. He's not so... Who's going to love him for me? So, it, <clears throat> so when, when God is, is placing someone on your heart and mind, it's, what if it's somebody that you're having trouble forgiving? So how could God... <laughs> What is it? So, 
It's my one thing this year. That, that's for me. It's, that's the guy who needs Jesus. And so there, there's other people in your life. There, there's one person in your life that the impact you could have knowing how they hurt you, if you showed them of love of Jesus, what could he do through that? How much more powerful is it when God shows his love through the most unexpected places? What is it that God's leading you to do? To let go of your pride, let go of how you feel, let go of your comfort, and claim God's promises. That he's the only one who can change. He's the only one who can produce that. So are we willing to do our part to release God's power for him to do his? Can you bow your heads with me? God, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your peace. I thank you for, Holy Spirit, your, your complete engagement in our service and our worship today. And I pray that you just speak to us. If you have yet to reveal to us our one thing, then I, I pray that we would spend some time, not just now, but throughout this week, and God, really ask you what it is you want to change in us, about us, or around us. What is it, God? Or is it maybe who is it? So God, just lead us and then just show us clearly. We're going to claim direction. We're going to claim power. We're going to claim the strength to do whatever it is you're asking us to do. Because if you're asking us to do it, then what that means is we don't have the power to do it without you. Thank you for this past year. Thank you for even the struggles and the trials. We thank you for the people that you placed in our life. They're there for a reason. So help us to take full advantage of the people that are there to help us. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you've yet to trust Him for salvation, and that's where it begins. That's the first step to find peace, joy, and eternal life. So if you want to invite Jesus into your life, I'd love to pray with you. Just lift your hand and let me know if you want to make that decision today.